Now, let's move on. Are you a fan of uh, 007, James Bond? Uh, only Sean Connery's. Uh, of course, because I, I, I don't watch anything after... Uh, was his Diamonds Are Forever was the last you know, and well, he came back to do Never Say Never Again but uh, I think Sean's best days were behind him did by that you see uh, is it, I think I got the right one View to a Kill this is when he wore the uh, famous white snow anorak with the sort of polar bear hair around it anyway the point is Roger Moore's son has put a, up for sale his dad's famous uh, 007 outfits, a lot of his personal stuff as well, so licence to sell, if you see what I mean. Uh, so I thought we'd have a chat about this with the, the host of the Really 007 podcast, Tom Pickup. Uh, good afternoon, Tom. Afternoon, Kevin. Good to see, speak to you again. Um, would you, How much would you pay for Roger Moore's <laughs> uh, view to a kill uh, ski outfit? <laughs> well, I'm not just anybody. I love Roger and I love that film, so probably quite a lot more but I, I reckon it would go for many many thousand mm -hmm. and uh, I mean the reason I wanted to talk about this is just so we can have the usual discussion uh, who was the best Bond oh, I'm, with, on, no I'm, I'm, with, I'm with Ali Ross he's from Scotland so Ali <laughs> who do you think was the best Bond is, is it the only Scottish <laughs> what person that it's played Big Tam from Fountain Bridge in Edinburgh there you go and so. that is the end of the debate yeah, yeah. <laughs> so Sean Connery thanks for coming on Tom uh, no, <laughs> so, no uh, who do you think is the best Bond yeah I think you can't sort of get better than Sean, but given that that was, goodness me, 40-odd years ago since he was in the role, I think we've done pretty well with the actors we've had. I think if you just want pure entertainment, Roger's your man, though, personally. Yeah, he, he, he was the funny one. I mean... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then subsequent Bonds after him have tried to go back to the uh, more dangerous Sean Connery version. My favourite scene ever, I think I might have told you this before, Ali, my favourite scene in any Bond film ever, I think it's Thunderball, the fight at the beginning with the guy who's actually dressed as a woman at the funeral. And they, yeah, and then, they ma and then in the end, uh, he, man he manages, to, uh, Sean Connery gets him, in throws him into a bath full of water and then hurls the electric fan into the water and, of course, it electrocutes him and he goes... Shocking. <laughs> um, but so I think he was a great Bond. I think I agree with you. Uh, Roger Moore brought a lot of family fun and entertainment to it. Uh, I'll tell you something. I mean, this is just my personal opinion. I was never knocked out by um, Daniel Craig. I just thought he was a bit flat. What did you think uh, about Daniel Craig? Yeah, Tom? it was a bit difficult because when he was cast, everyone was thinking he's blonde and he's a bit, I don't know, a bit small maybe day say that but i think he he was good for the part that he did but it wouldn't really be the direction that i would go mm. with bond so which brings us to the next question because my god this is the longest running saga since crossroads who is going to be the next damn bond uh, Tom? <laughs> i don't think they even have a direction i don't think they know which era they're going to place him in for instance they could go back to the 50s of the books they could do an you know all the way back to the 60s, where the films were set in the middle. But I think there's a product placement. They have to have them set now, to be honest. I don't, in terms of names, there's quite a few who've gone around. My, my view would still be Henry Cavill, who, of course, played Superman. So he's already used to the fame. He's used to a big franchise. And I think he's born for the role. He was actually in the running for it when Daniel Craig was, but he was a bit too young then. And he, he looks the part. He's a, he's a great actioner, he can act, and he's ready-made for, for James Bond. That would be my choice. What do you think about, I mean, an actor of colour, someone like Idris Elba? I mean, would that be a problem for you? I mean, it, you know, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind, but it's, it's not exactly what's in the Ian Fleming books, is it? No. I mean, you could say that there's a lot that's changed since the books, haven't they? Like, he's meant to have, he's meant to be very tall with long, dark hair and a scar on the side of his cheek. So if you're going with that, that would rule out quite a few of the actors who played Bond. So, no, I think I think Eddie Shelby would have been good, but I think he is a bit too old now. I mean, he must be he must be pushing fifty. I think. I think they want someone in the mid thirties, early forties, absolute limit, just because the 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 amount of films that come out now it takes so long to tie them down to a big contract. Yeah. They could be there 10, 15 years. So, if you're starting when you're fifty. That's too old, isn't it? <laughs> it is. I'll tell you a, a thing that also the Bond, whoever plays Bond, must have. And I think Daniel Craig 
I'd only give him about a 6 out of 10, maybe 5 out of 10 for this. Timothy Dalton, uh, who I interviewed when he was Bond, I'd give him about 1 out of 10. You need an actor who is happy in the public eye, who is comfortable to give interviews, to talk to people. Roger Moore was great at that. Do you remember yeah. uh, when he was asked, uh, do, you know, do, do, you, do you do your own stunts? And he said, yes, I do all my own stunts. And all my own lying, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know. So he he was great at giving interviews, and I think whoever they choose next, they need to get someone like that because, as I say, Daniel Craig, nice enough guy, but never comfortable in the public eye. The James Bond needs that, doesn't he? Yeah, totally agree. You want an ambassador for the series. Yes, the kids can look up to as well. I think we've lost the touch where the whole family can go and watch a James Bond film and be entertained. So. Yeah, Roger and Pierce were the best at that, in my view. They were sort of family guys. But they were also, you know, convincing enough as a secret agent, very charming, but not. it didn't lead into that sort of nasty violence edge that might have put off a few parents taking the children to the cinema. Mm. Yes, indeed. Um, so w is there any date slated for the next Bond film? <laughs> I wish I knew, Kevin. I I think it could be another two or three years until a film's out. Right. I'd just like to hear about the casting to find out who is Bond before. That would excite me more than anything to, to show that they're actually doing something. Because it's been, if you think about it, it's been one and a half years since the last film, No Time To Die, came out. Mm -hmm. But because of COVID and the delays, it's been four years since they stopped filming the last film. So I, I think surely we're going to have to hear something fairly soon. Uh, listen, uh, Tom, at the risk of uh, b being cast as a misogynistic sexist, uh, <laughs> or all of us, can we all agree that, uh, with all due respect to women, uh, James Bond can't be a woman, right? No, I, and I think they have said that, the producers have said that it wouldn't be. You know, you can have other strong female characters in it, like they have done. Yeah. If you remember The Spy Who Loved Me, they had Barbara Bach as a... Asia, Agent Triple X, and Yer Masova, who is the Russian equivalent of Bond. Mm. You can have strong female characters, but alongside James Bond, who's a man. That's my own view, certainly. Yeah. I liked Plenty O'Toole. That was my favourite Sean Connery. Yeah. Your favourite Sean Connery line. I'm Plenty, <laughs> Plenty O'Toole. And he looks at him and goes, yeah, but of course you are. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Named after your father, perhaps. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Tom, fantastic to talk to you as always. Thanks so much for your time, mate. That's Tom Pickup, host of the Really 007 podcast. Have a listen. If you're a Bond fan, uh, it's well worth it.